The art of trading draft picks is complex. Note, this is an aggressive style and should not be tried by the conservative type drafter or owner. Let's say you were handed the 1.02 draft selection. I'm going to show you how to gain an additional first and second round pick without losing either of your original first or second round draft selections. Which means you will have two picks in both the first and the second rounds. Wow! How? Okay, the first step is to target a first round draft pick, let's say the 1.05 as an example. Without touching the first or second round, offer up your third and fourth round for the 1.05. Honestly, the key here is to not ask for a second pick in return. If you were to ask for, let's say, a sixth or a seventh round or whatever, the owner is more likely to not see the appeal of gaining an entire draft pick by making this trade. If the 1.05 owner doesn't bite, try a lower draft selection like the 1.10. So now you have two first rounders. You still have your second and you're only missing the fourth as your third is actually moved into the first round. Okay, now let's target an additional second rounder, again without using your original second round draft selection. This trade will likely require that you give up three draft selections for one, as you no longer have a third or fourth to offer. Again, the key to making this trade look bold and unique to the other owner is to only ask for the one draft selection in the second round. The three for one effect will have at least one owner in your league drooling over the conservative stockpile approach. Keep in mind that with all of these aggressive type moves, you need to make at least five to 10 offers per idea to get a bite. This type of trade is not likely to get accepted the first time around or by the first owner. Again, keep in mind that your no pick zone isn't actually starting in the fourth round as your third rounder is essentially moved into the first round and your fourth rounder is now moved into the second. So your no pick zone is in reality only spanning from the fifth to the seventh round. Now, we're not done yet, but let's look at the potential teams both using this approach and not using it. The original draft selections in the first and second round you have in both of these scenarios. And let's call those players Todd Gurley and Mike Evans. So let's remove those players and then evaluate. I don't know about you, but these teams aren't even close. Randall Cobb and Jeremy Langford don't even hold a candle to DeAndre Hopkins and an Amari Cooper type. Now, Amari Cooper might go a little bit higher, so use another player, maybe three or four slots below Amari Cooper, if you don't think you could land him with uh, that second rounder that we're talking about uh, trading into. Now, back to the draft board. Having a no-pick zone spanning from rounds five through seven, that still might have many fantasy owners uncomfortable heading into a startup draft. So, it's time for the damage control phase. This phase really is just a repeat of what we've been doing. So let's take a round eight and a round nine and turn it into a round six pick. And then let's take a 10th and 11th and turn it into a round eight pick. No, this is creating an even bigger no pick zone with each of your moves, but you're kicking the problem so far down the road with this repeated approach, your no pick zone will really be minimal inside the rounds that really mean anything. Remember, your third is in the first, your fourth is in the second, and your damage control trades help make you only really lose a fifth and a seventh, as your ninth, 10th, and 11th are players that honestly, you could be comparing to waiver claims or, or players that you draft later in the draft. And if you're like me, you'll take this one step further, probably your last move before your league mates refuse to trade with you out of spite. In this scenario, your third is actually moved into the first, you now have a fourth rounder, and your fifth is moved essentially into the second. And while you have a no draft pick zone from rounds 6 through 11, you can assemble a team like Aaron Rodgers, Todd Gurley, DeAndre Hopkins, Amari Cooper, and Mike Evans. Or, due to the fact that you won't likely get a solid running back in the 12 plus round range, swap out Hyde for Rodgers. Using this approach, your 12 plus round draft selections or your waiver guys will fill in holes better than most will have hoped when all is said and done. The truth is, other owners in your league will probably be quietly mad that you're starting a Kendall Wright at your wide receiver three given you gave up all of your depth. This aggressive draft pick trading style is not for everyone. I repeat, it is not for everyone, especially if you're a conservative type owner. But it's a great way to build a dynasty team if you consider yourself good at both late drafting and waiver wire adding. Imagine finding a gem like a, a Devonta Freeman that was found on waivers last year in many leagues. Imagine adding a player like that to a team that already has such big guns on the roster. Now go get them. Good luck trading.
Sleep you. Learn about it.